For those who may be here for the first time, we welcome you and pray that God touches you with the good news of Jesus. We have special resources for you. Following our worship right back there in the entryway is a special table that uh, visitor registration and welcome. So we'd like you to learn more about Bethany Ministries and how God can very well be asking you to be part of what we do for our Vacaville community. So let's worship. Let's begin with our first hymn. <laughs> Of the whole world for the well-being of the Church of God, 
and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. And for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend this gracious Lord. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. 
For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? What, after all, is Apollos, and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service, and you are God's field, God's building. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, there remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still together on the way, or your adversary may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for the whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. For it is 
his footstool, or by Jerusalem toward the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair while I die. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. This is the challenging, awesome gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. We now confess our faith using the words of the night of I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being one of substance of the Father, of whom all things remain, who for us men and for our salvation Savior of our lives, who would bring humankind to the thinking of would be humankind to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, praying that humankind would receive him as Lord because of the sin and the, the devastation that happened in that sin. And so with that hope that we have in Christ, with that faith that we have in Christ, the joy that we have in him, the relationship with him, it is the bedrock of our lives. He is the bedrock. He's the cornerstone of our lives. He's everything to us. And so we love him with our whole hearts and reflect that love with our lives. Because of Christ changing us, he enables and equips his people to share that wonderful message with our world. To those who, living, who are living in darkness, those who are lost, those who are brokenhearted, those who are downtrodden, Jesus loves all people and he uses us, the church, individuals of the church to bring forth his love and his gospel message to people around us. It's quite a privilege. But you along with I, sometimes I, I feel like such a failure. 
for not sharing my faith or, fair, or sharing about Christ and this love for other people, this love for people that he sends my way. Maybe I'm a little shy, a little reticent, or a little fearful for, for sharing faith in Christ or the message of Christ, whatever it may be. And that's what today's message is all about. Today's message is about God bringing forth the growth. He uses us, all of us, to bring forth the message of Jesus to our world. But it's God who brings forth the growth. And so that should give us some encouragement. That should give us some confidence to realize that, you know, I, I'm just an instrument and it's up to God. It's God's power that's going to change the life before me. And so I need to relax be part of what God is doing in my life, in Bethany's life, in the Backville community from all of the Christian churches to share the love of Christ with our world, here and beyond. I'd like to uh, have us take a look at a story about a fellow named A.C. Green. I have another Laker uh, story. And A.C. Green is a wonderful Christian man. He had this to say. He said, men often talk about their glory years in high school. At Benson High School in Portland, Oregon, I was a sports-minded, egotistical maniac. And I could have broken scoring records, but Coach Gray wouldn't let me. Even with the brakes on, twice that year I scored 39 points, and in the season finale against Wilson, I scored 40. I averaged 27 points per game. And as a team, we scored more than 100 points in seven games and averaged over 90. I was voted the Oregonians 1981 All-Metro Area Player of the Year. Coach Gray wouldn't allow me to be a hot shot scorer because he was more interested in the final stat, being in first place as a team. He knew the only way we could reach that championship level was for us to become team players. In basketball and in life, Everyone starts out with a what's-in-it-for-me attitude. That natural selfishness has to be broken to be a winner. You have to realize that you can't do it all by yourself. You need the team. Coach Gray made me pass the ball and play unselfishly. Regardless of the individual stats, we, the team, reached the top. We went all the way. I share that story because it reminds us as we have the Great Commission as a challenge to let people know about Jesus Christ and his love for them, his dying on the cross for them, his resurrection, that whole wonderful gospel for all people on this world. It is a team effort. We're in this together. In fact, you turn to your neighbor to say, hey, thanks for being part of the team. Okay? Let's go ahead and turn to you. Thanks for being part of the team. It's a team thing. As Paul said, I planted Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. Think about the people that God has brought to you in your lifetime. And especially people in your life who watered faith in your heart who planted the seed of the gospel. Maybe you have one or two major players or influencers of your life who brought you to faith in Christ by the power of God. They weren't the ones, of course. But they presented Jesus to you. Maybe one or two major people, but there could have been a whole lot of other people, team players, who were part of the whole progression of you finally realizing and understanding Christ loves you. Do you think of those people? Now think of us at Bethany. Think of other Christians that you know. And you can think of people who have here at Bethany shared with others the gospel or have served in the community who have planted the seed of the gospel in different ways, word and deed. We're all part of a team working together. I remember a Statistic, I hate to call it a statistic, but um, this one article I read years ago said that the average 
number of people that it takes for a person to finally accept Christ is around seven. The article is saying it's basically there are seven approaches, seven times that a person has heard the gospel, and then finally, you know, by the seventh, and I, again, I'm not into like, okay, how much are you averaging this week? Okay. No. Or how much is Bethany's average, you know? <clears throat> and so here it is, where it's a team. And sometimes I think we get so uptight about our personal witnesses, we feel like, okay, this is my only chance to share with this person the love of Jesus Christ, and I'm going to make him sit here for another four hours until he finally gives up. It's okay, I believe in Jesus, you know? You know? We can put so much pressure on ourselves and realize that often God uses all kinds of people, many different kinds of people, to touch a person's life. So it's a team thing. And it's also a faithful thing. It's a faithful thing. It simply says that God gave the growth. In our praying, in our tasks and words, and reaching out to people, and our service to people, the love of Christ. We're leaving it to God. We're leaving any response to God's power, to God's work. We just simply are serving God and doing whatever He has gifted us to do, speaking or doing, to have people brought to know the love of Christ. We do all that we can and yet, we leave it to God. I like this story from Christian author Brian Rodefelt. He said, my wife Angie went to a really rough high school. There were a few Christians there, apart from one teacher, Mr. David Button, who taught manual arts. I imagine that's industrial arts. Years after Mr. Button left his position, dozens of his former students became believers. Many entered the ministry and became pastors and missionaries. And I tracked Mr. Button down, who was now 70 years old and retired. He was stunned and choked with emotion when I told him of the many conversions since he had taught at that high school. I wondered how his influence had wrought such a harvest. And he told me that many times he had prayed softly over his classes as he sat back in his desk and watched them work. But apart from this, he did nothing to influence these students to work Christ. The only common point of spiritual connection the students shared was that they were prayed over by a teacher. Now, I don't know what you're doing in terms of reaching out to family or friends or whoever. Maybe you've had some good conversations with them. Maybe you've read scripture with them. You've shared with them your faith. But perhaps you're thinking, oh, I don't know. I just They're not changing. Nothing's happening. Just continue to pray for them. Don't give up. I think of this Mr. Benton as, again, this is a rough high school. That it's, he was at his desk. He's just looking at these kids and he's thinking, you know, some of these kids could be in prison in a couple of years. But did he pray? He prayed. And so as we look at challenging people in our lives, as we look at and read about different people, whether the media des describes it or we know somebody personally, pray for those people. Because God brings the growth. It is curious to think about, what about those Christians who were persecuted by Saul? You know? I can't wait to get to heaven to find some of those believers and say, hey, you know, when he, he was persecuting you guys, I mean, did you pray for him? I would say, I bet they did. They did pray for Saul. Think about people who are challenging your life. Think about people who are challenging our world. I remember praying for Matt and Burial O'Hare years ago, you know, about atheists. God brings the growth. God is capable of doing things beyond our imagination. And it's through us. We who are imperfect. We who stumble and, and really don't know how to, how to, how to share sometimes. And, and yet he is bringing forth the growth. He will do it through us. 
And so God builds his church, we realize that we are under construction. It's a work in progress. Now. Turn to your neighbor and go ahead and say, you're, I mean, we're, <laughs> we're a work in progress. Aren't we? So turn, turn individually, which is reflected even with that phrase, you're God's fellow workers for each involved in working for Christ, serving Christ with our own talents and gifts and abilities as God has designed us for individual. And yet together, we are God's field. We are people who, as a field has plants and has, has all kinds of things growing, are deepening their roots in the soil. That's us together, deepening our roots and our lives and our faith in Jesus Christ here at Bethany. And then we're God's building. As God undergirds us with his grace and his power to be a structure that is strong in Christ. To be a structure that has meaning and purpose to let people know about him. And so this whole process of being a worker, being part of God's field, God's building, it's a work in progress feeling. And it's a work in progress thing. And and yet we cling to that promise from Philippians 1, 6. We know that is absolutely happening as God's working in our lives. Let's say it together. And I am sure of this. And he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. So may God bless us as we continue with what's so deep in our hearts and that's our faith in Christ. That's our allegiance and our devotion to Him for what He has done for us. Through the cross, He has freed us from our sin. And through His resurrection, He has empowered us to be witnesses of Him, to share Him with our world and our community. And sometimes we feel weak. Sometimes we don't know exactly how to say it, but... He who began to get work in use would declare out the completion to the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's for all of us. And to Him be the glory. We lift high the cross. Amen. Share some of our uh, repetitions, prayer requests from, from Ted, from Lita. Uh, it's Lita's sixth birthday today. So, Lita, you could stand. Ted, okay, I'm, I'm backwards. Okay. Or if you want to come up, that's good. Now bow, you bow at that point. Okay. Okay. Okay, Tess. Let's, let's see if we're going to Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tess. Happy birthday to you. Hey. I'm going to thank you, okay? Lord, we thank you so much for Taya. Just such a joy uh, to be around and have her in our lives. Bless her parents and 
and your siblings to us to go together as a family and love with you as the Lord and Savior. Bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> All right, this is the last birthday point, but this is for Bob Duncan, okay? <laughs> Gathered in the name of Jesus, let us turn to God in prayer for the world, for the church, and for ourselves. For the world, that all who govern use their power to provide for human thriving, caring for the poor, allowing liberty to, to individuals, and making and establishing just laws. <coughs> that all those affected by warfare, soldiers, victims of violence, and our enemies, may experience the peace of Christ which surpasses understanding. O oh Lord, we pray. For the church. suffering, the sick, hospitalized, convalescing, undergoing tests, or dying. May see your mercy in the midst of whatever they face. That marriages and families of our congregation may look to you in times of trouble and times of joy. That those who travel may depart and arrive safely. That whatever we plan to do as a congregation may shine forth to the world with the brightness of the resurrection of Jesus. That those among us who mourn may be comforted by the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And that we remember with thankfulness the lives of those who have gone before us in the faith and have died and, and have died to bring us with them to that day when all crying, suffering, and pain will be no more, and death will be vanquished forever. O oh Lord, we pray. And hear our prayer, Lord God, for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave his life and was raised that we might live anew. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand now as we continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and sight to that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. Therefore, the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. 
To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took breath. And after he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is good for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is often to drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Join together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for our remember. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
together, we give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salvation of the faith. We implore you that in your mercy, you have strengthened us to stand in faith toward you and in perfect love toward one another. For Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord, Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Sing our closing hymn.